and welcome to the Apostolic Resource Center. This is Lisa Great. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have a word for you that I know is going to bless you, that the Lord spoke to me, and I am excited to share it with you. You know, <laughs> I, I don't get on here just to get on here. I get on here when I really feel like the Lord is wanting to say something to his people. And we are living in a time, a day, an age, an era where there is so much transition going on and there's so much misinformation being projected. Some people believe that this is the apocalypse, the end of the world, but I believe that the God narrative at hand right now is actually one of so much good news that we don't even fully comprehend all that God is about to do in and through our lives right now. And so I was reading through and praying uh, Psalm 103, and I'm trying to get to it right here. Uh, the other day. And as I did, the Lord began to speak to me. Now I've read Psalm 103. I've prayed it. You're going to know it. It's not an unfamiliar passage for you, but what caught my attention and what I felt like the Lord was wanting to highlight to us, I think is going to be such good news to you because I never saw it this way. I didn't even know that this is what this word meant. And it just literally unlocked the whole first four or yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, uh, excuse me, let me back up. What I learned is that it's going to unlock the first five verses for us in a way that I did not realize before. So let's read Psalm 103 verses one through five. If you have your Bible, you can read along with me. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. Who pardons all your iniquities, first benefit, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, and who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So we've heard that so many times. We've had that prayed over us so many times. We've been told about it so many times that I literally just read it and it's like, yes, yes, yes. I don't necessarily see it all the time, but I hear it and therefore I believe it. And maybe you're the same way. But the other day, the Lord had me stop and look up the word benefits. And the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, you believe the word benefits is related to corporations in America. And I knew exactly what he was talking about because I was like, that's exactly how we view it. So if you get a job in corporate America or a company in the United States, what happens is, is they, you go through the interview, you send in your resume, you go through the interview process, you get offered a job, they tell you your salary, and many, many, many jobs give you what we call a benefits package. But what the Lord revealed to me is, is this is not a benefits package for a job you've been hired to do. Because the thing is with corporate America benefits are, number one, they don't give you the benefits until after 90 days. Benefits include vacation, 401k, which is like a retirement program. Um, it can include health insurance. It can include company stock. It just depends on the company that you work for, depending on the benefits that you give. When I worked at Starbucks, we were given 30% um, discount on any product we bought. We were given a free pound of um, coffee beans every week. We were given free drinks 30 minutes before we worked, during the whole time we did work, and up to 30 minutes after we worked. We were given bean stock in the company. Um, so there was a lot of benefits to working for Starbucks and that was only for part-time people. But the reality is benefits are tied to a job that you do. And if you don't do the job, you don't get the benefits. And so that's how I always saw this. So when it says forget none of his benefits, I always thought it was related to something that we did. And that meant you know what? One of the benefits for pardoning my iniquity, healing my disease, redeeming my life from the pit. I didn't think of it consciously that there was something I had to do, but I think subconsciously because of the way I understood benefits and maybe the way you understand the word benefits, we, we, we equate it to somehow I got to do this and then I get this. But the Lord said, I want you to look up the Hebrew word for benefits. And so I have a Bible where it will literally show me the Strong's word. The Strong's concordance is where the Hebrew and the Greek words are for the English word that's been translated. And so here's what it says for benefits, which was very exciting to me. It says benefits, dealings, deeds. Then it says deserved, recompense, 
reward. And I was like, what? Recompense and reward? And so then I went down a little further and the number one word for benefits in the Hebrew, wherever you see the word benefits in your scripture, the number one word it's translated as recompense. The number two word is reward, but the translators chose the third word, which is benefit. So what the Lord wants us to know is that this is not a benefit that you earn. This is actually recompense for things you've suffered. This is also a reward for what you've endured. And you say, well, what have I suffered? What have I endured? Well, here's the situation. We have suffered and endured a Babylonian system, whether we realize it or not. We were born into a Babylonian debt, disease, distress, discontentment system. It creates all kinds of of physical ailments in our body. It creates all kinds of addictions from food addictions to alcohol addictions, to drug addictions, to sex addictions, because the pressure of the Babylonian lifestyle, the Babylonian system that we're under produces in us uh, behaviors that we wouldn't necessarily do if we weren't under that pressure. And so the Lord says, I know what you've endured under the Babylonian system, and I'm about to recompense you for what you've underwent. I'm about to reward you. We hear this in the court of law, right? We're going to pay you for pain and suffering losses. And then people get incredible amounts of money because they suffered pain and loss. The Lord is saying these benefits are not because of anything you have to do. These benefits I'm giving to you as a reward, as a recompense, because of what you've suffered under a taskmaster called the Babylonian system. Now, this is a very biblical um, precedent that was set all the way back in Egypt. Remember when Israel was told, all you have to do is put the blood over the doorpost, the angel of death is going to pass over, and then you have to, with haste, eat the Passover, and then they followed Moses through the Red Sea into the wilderness. But they didn't just come out with unleavened bread. They came out with gold, silver, and jewels, because the Bible says they plundered the Egyptians. Now, if they were going out into a wilderness to worship the Lord, why did they need excess plunder? There's nothing to build in a wilderness. There's no water. That's why it's called a wilderness. It's a barren land. There's nowhere to dwell. They weren't going to end up living in, in the wilderness. They were to pass through the wilderness. So why did they need all that plunder? God gave them all that plunder as a reward, as recompense, as a benefit for everything they endured in Egypt. And how long did they endure in Egypt? 430 years, which means four generations minimum, possibly five, endured Egypt. And that meant at least three or four generations were born into Egypt. Only the first generation was brought into Egypt. All the other generations were born in Egypt. And God gave them recompense pay because they were born into Egypt. But there came a generation that was going to come out of Egypt with plunder. And I declare to you today by the word of the Lord that we are the generation that was born in Babylon and we are coming out with plunder. How do I know? Listen to Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, his rewards, his recompense, his restitution pay. Don't forget it because you're about to get it. What is it going to look like? He's going to pardon all your iniquities. That word pardon should trip you up immediately and say, wait a minute. He didn't say forgive. He said pardon. That is a jail sentence term. Uh, To be pardoned of something means you committed a crime that put you in a jail situation. You committed a crime that created a consequence for you. You did something that produced a consequence. If you're overweight, your body endures the consequence of knees that hurt, joints that ache, diseases that come on you. If you don't exercise, there's consequences. If you're angry and bitter and resentful because of something that was done for you and you've chosen not to forgive. There's consequences. Those are what the Bible says he's pardoning us of 
all our iniquities, everything that is self-inflicted because of a choice that we made. He's about to give people a get out of jail free card. Why? because he's pardoning all our iniquities because many of the iniquities that we have done are because we've been under the oppression of a Babylonian system and we didn't even realize how much pressure, stress, and everything else we were under. And he's like, I'm about to pardon all your iniquities. Body of Christ, I'm about to pardon all your iniquities. Get ready. So don't forget what I'm about to do. Next, he says, I'm about to heal all your diseases. Why is this a nod back to Egypt? Because remember what he said to Israel? He said that the the diseases of Egypt, I will not put upon you. Only obey my commands. Only follow me. He said these these diseases of Egypt, they're never going to come upon you. You see Babylon, Egypt, they're all they're the same same thing but two different uh, names. And we've been in Babylon and there's been Babylonian diseases placed on us. And he's about to heal us of all of them. Ones we know and we don't know. Mental illness is a Babylonian disease. Mental illness trips into all kinds of different fruits that manifest in names that they're throwing out as though they're just no big deal like transgender and homosexuality and bestiality and alcoholism and and anxiety and, and all these Uh, We got people on lithium, we got people on ADHD and Adderall and all these diseases and they're popping pills and you turn on the news and, and all you hear is about a pill to take for this problem or that problem. That is all Babylonian diseases and he's about to heal us of all of them. I know, I know your minds can't wrap yourself around it because our experiences don't match the word of God. And it's not that we don't believe the word of God, but our experiences are screaming in our ear. But I'm telling you, your experiences are about to change. They're about to match the word of God. And they're about to come like this and be a perfect match. Mark my words, it's coming faster than we even realize. It says, who redeems your life from the pit. The pit is a dark place. The pit of depression, the pit of discouragement, the pit of anxiety and fear, that darkness, that that hiding, that man cave, that 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 location in retail therapy where you hide and and try to act like it doesn't hurt. It's that that hiding behind your weight. It's hiding behind your your husband. It's hiding behind your wife. It's it's hiding behind your title. All of that hiding is going to go away because he's about to redeem your life from the pit of shame, the pit of discouragement, the pit of I don't measure up, the pit of I'm not good enough. The pit of unworthiness. He's about to redeem your life from the pit because it's a benefit. Babylon has thrown you into the pit. Remember they threw Joseph in a deep pit. Babylon is jealous of who you are. The Egyptians knew that Israel was multiplying. That's why they said, get out. The Philistines envied Israel. That's why they told him, uh, his name was Isaac. They, they, they envied Isaac. That's why they threw dirt in his well. So th- because he had become so prosperous, the enemy hates you. He's envious of you. He's jealous of you because you're marked by God because you are a bearer of the image of God and he's thrown you in a pit and God says, I'm about to redeem you from the pit. And then he says, I don't just pardon your iniquity. I don't just heal your disease. I don't re- just redeem you from the pit. I'm about to crown you with loving kindness and compassion. There's a crowning coming upon God's people. A crowning. Remember in 1 Peter 2, we're called a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a a kingdom belonging to God. We are kings and priests unto our God. He's crowning us for kingship, for rulership but he's crowning us with love and compassion because if you don't rule out of love and compassion, you're not a faithful ruler in the kingdom of God because he doesn't lift you up. He doesn't pardon your iniquity, heal your disease, redeem your life from the pit and crown you with loving kindness and compassion so that you can sit and look down on everybody. He does it so that you can stretch forth your hand and pardon iniquity, heal disease, redeem people from the pit and lift them up 
and crown them with loving kindness and compassion. It's supposed to be cyclical. And once we're in abundance, which we're headed into, and I'm about to show you this, it's going to be easier to give to others because we're going to have no fear of running out. So the final benefit, the final recompense, the final reward that he's giving us, he's going to satisfy our years with good things. We are the generation coming out of Babylon. Our years are about to be satisfied with good things. How do I know? Because Jeremiah said to, to the nation of Israel before they went into Babylon, before, he said, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, Jeremiah 29, 11, P plans to prosper you, to give you a future and a hope. He said that to them before they went in because the Lord always declares the end from the beginning. But we're not at the beginning of going in. We're at the end of coming out and he's about to satisfy our year with good things. Our years with good things. We don't even understand what this means. We don't even fully comprehend what he's about to do. That's why 1 Corinthians 2 says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has in store for those that love him. My friends, I'm telling you, there is so much coming for us that we don't even understand it. Benefits, rewards, recompense for suffering. You can tell me all that you've suffered. And God says, I know and I'm about to recompense you. And his kindness is about to heal you. His goodness is about to satisfy you. And here's why. Here's the punchline. Psalm 103 verse 5. So that your youth is renewed like the eagle. You don't need a fountain of youth. You need your youth renewed like the eagle. You're about to get your strength back. You're about to get your hope back. You're about to get your life that you've never really known back. How do I know? Because Proverbs 6, let me just read this to you. The Lord gave me this and he said, tell them this. We know that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Right? John 10, 10. We know the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. And the Lord is declaring to us today that the thief has been caught. And here's what it says in Proverbs 6.31. But when he is found, the thief, he must repay sevenfold. He must give all, even if it costs him his whole house. The Egyptians were completely plundered by the Israelites for pain and suffering um, restitution pay. The enemy of our souls is the Babylonian system that has robbed us financially, has robbed us emotionally, has robbed us physically, has robbed us spiritually, has robbed us familially. Our families have been destroyed, our finances. We've been laboring to get out of debt. We've been laboring for our families. We've been laboring emotionally. We've been laboring spiritually. And God says, I never created you for that. When he broke the curse off of Adam, when he died on a tree, everyone who hangs on a tree is cursed. When Jesus took the curse of the law, Genesis 3, Adam, you're going to be cursed to work the ground with thorns and thistles by the sweat of your brow. When God broke the curse, he said, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow to it. We've never known that. We've never known the blessing of the Lord making rich without adding sorrow to it. We've even been taught a theology that you better not prosper because you'll get arrogant. You better not prosper because you'll forget God. But can I tell you something? He says forget not all his benefits because guess what? You're about to receive them. The body of Christ is about to receive the benefits of God. You don't have anything to be afraid of. God is about to release divine health. He's about to release supernatural finances. He's about to release um, a renewal of your youth. He's about to release loving kindness and compassion. The lost are going to turn when they see what God is about to do to the body of Christ. They're going to want to be one with us. They're going to turn to him because his kindness is about to lead the world to repentance. You mark my words. Psalm 103 is about to become our reality. 
No more just praying it by faith. It's about to become experiential reality. And it's going to take time for your mind to catch up with it because it's going to be that good. So I encourage you this morning, be encouraged that God is for you and not against you. These are not just words. We are living in now time. My really close friend, Autumn Darden, said to me just the other day, she said, the Lord spoke to her and said, Jeremiah 1, 11 and 12. And then he said my name, Lisa, to her. He said, tell Lisa, Jeremiah 1, 11 and 12. So she sent it to me the other day and she reiterated it again yesterday. Well, let me read Jeremiah 1, 11 and 12 to you. Here's what it says. The word of the Lord came to me saying, what do you see, Jeremiah? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. She said it to me twice. This is what the word of the Lord is to you, Lisa. The Lord is watching over his word to perform it. I'm not just speaking pie in the sky, get your hopes up stuff. I'm telling you, this is the word of the Lord and he's watching over it and he's about to perform it. That's why you have to Psalm 103 verse 1 and 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Get ready. It's about to get easy to praise the Lord. Thank you for listening. My name is Lisa Great with the Apostolic Resource Center. I hope you have a great day.